What is happening, T-Blankers? My name is Dion, and you're watching Life is Feudal. The reason why I'm not doing a proper introduction is because I'm so tired. I have stayed up so long last night playing this game because it's so damn addicting. But what I want to do for you guys this morning, and for you guys and also any future people that come, well, in the future, is I want to get you guys into this to show you what it's about, but also to give you an idea of what's probably one of the best things to do when you're actually starting out this game. So this game is actually like Rust, but in the feudal ages, and the really, really nice thing is like, you know in Rust games and stuff like that, you gather resources and then you're pretty much like building a base literally straight away. And this game, it's a lot longer before you do things. You'll find yourself hunting and gathering a lot longer than you would normally do in other games to think about even getting a civilization like buildings is a very long-term goal and you can't do that by yourself so the first thing is when you actually get into this game you're gonna have a list of attributes and crafting skills and combat skills you can also pick your races and whatnot but don't really mind the stuff like the races I mean that's all customization is great but the attributes and crafting skills are gonna be quite important when you actually start out this game. When it comes to attributes, nothing per se is actually the best. The game doesn't give you an idea of like which stat does what, but I personally go for a lot of agility, but you'll find when you're actually doing a lot of your tasks throughout your day, it's gonna increase those individual statistics anyway, but crafting skills is really important. For example, here I've got a nice mix, but I don't have a lot of points in farming. You don't do a lot of farming in the beginning, and farming takes a long time to actually do anything. Everything else is really important, like prospecting is for mining, forestry is for actually cutting down trees and whatnot. Nature's lore is going to help a lot if you want to actually survive, and terraforming is going to be good because when you actually get into mining, it's going to be very important. Combat skills I don't think is too important, but I've put up blades, mastery, throwing weaponry, and malicious service, warhorse handling, and two handed blade mastery I didn't put up because, well, I want to be an assassin. Assassin has to, like, you know, freaking pick at people with a dagger. But also, warhorse, you're not going to even think about horses for ages because your civilization is just not going to be at that point. Otherwise, everything else doesn't matter, and you just go on into the game. You've just spawned in, and now you might be thinking to yourself, what the hell do I do? I don't even, I don't know the controls. The game will probably tell you that if you press F1, it'll show you all the controls, and literally, you can just go through this, and it'll show you exactly what to do. But one of the things that doesn't really show you is, oh, I can't move around. Well, if you just press tab, it's because every time you press tab, it gives you like a cursor on the screen. You can't actually see mine because I've actually got it with DX Story that you can't see mine, but it gives, it gives you a cursor and this allows you to just like go between the tabs in the bottom right like the different chats you have global local system and they're really self-explanatory so make sure as soon as you get in to actually talk to people do not be anti-social if you're anti-social you won't get anywhere in this i mean you probably will get somewhere in this game but it's going to be a lot slower than you might actually think and you probably get you probably die of boredom before you die of anything else so make sure you get some friends and i've actually got one of my friends on at the moment and i think he's actually located in the top right hand side of this map right so i've made it to my friend over here and the unfortunate thing is that it took so long to actually get here that it's night time and the day night cycles are really long it's not like night is one hour it might be one hour but it's actually longer it really depends on the server because some servers have different settings but anyway so he's actually made a campfire and that's absolutely fine but i want to make my own campfire to show you guys how to do it so what you're gonna do is if i had a bit of an issue actually where i couldn't select trees and if that happens it's because you're in combat stance like right now i'm in combat stance you can press c to go to third person see Look, my guy is all hunched over, he's ready for combat, he's ready to kill stuff, but instead, I'm gonna press R, just go back to a normal state, I'm gonna right click or use my mouse button um, on the tree, it really doesn't matter either or. What you're gonna do is go to forestry and snap branches, and what you're gonna literally do is snap loads of branches, like five of them. And when you do that, you get a big pop-up menu that comes in front of your screen whenever you've actually snapped a branch, or literally done almost anything in the game. What you do is you just press never show me this again, and it'll come up in the context menu below and just show you like exactly what it's done. It'll be like, forestry has increased to this level, constitution of willpower, because everything you do just has different things and apparently you gotta have willpower in order to break a branch who knows why when you go to your crafting skills by pressing l you'll notice that whatever you've been doing it will increase that skill and that skill does different things depending on which level you're at so you can go to the tabs up here and i'll just show you the different things that it does at that certain level and in order to actually get future abilities you need to unlock the previous one to a certain extent and then you'll be able to do it now i'm feeling a bit naked and a bit cold right now and my nipples are getting really hard so the nice thing is that the game is 
has actually given you an inventory and some actual initial clothes. So you got some rags here. All you can do is either right click or simply just double left click on it. And oh, come on up. Look at that. Just patting it onto me. Just slathering it on like some sort of lotion. And there we go. They've also given you some cookies. These are really important because you've got hunger meter uh, in the bottom left hand corner. So the green one is actually your stamina. You'll find that that runs out when you're running or just doing tasks. Your red one or pinkish, well, I don't know what that is, purple, is your health bar. The one directly above that is your alignment bar. So whenever you like kill somebody or hurt somebody or stab somebody, your alignment goes negative. The one to the right, which has like a sort of yellowy tinge to it, that's your hunger. What is he doing? <laughs> He's praying. All right, I'll pray with him. Prolong hunger and try to not keep that from- Oh my god. Right, so I've made it back to the camp. Now that hunger meter, in order to stave it off, well, obviously you have to eat food. Now, in order to do that, you've actually got to find food. I'm gonna get onto that in a second, but since we were actually building our campfire, Let's actually go ahead and finish that. So once you've got a number of branches, what you can actually do, I don't want to build this campfire too near to this place. I'm going to build it up in the hillside over here. What you're going to do is just right click or even use your middle mouse button on a piece of dirt in front of you. And you're going to go to forestry and create a campfire. Now you just have to select that, press build. And it'll give you like this sort of menu where it shows you like different places to build. Now, it's really self-explanatory. You can like move it by just using these different keys up here. But I'm just going to build mine right in front of me. You can even rotate it, but I'm just going to leave it because who, who really notices a campfire that's been rotated? That campfire has been rotated. And when you do that, just like a dog, you'll put down a signpost and claim your mark. So we're going to create that campfire by just going up to here. And you'll see, create a campfire. Now I'm going to go into my inventory and I'm going to realize, yes, I have enough sticks. I'm just going to drag and drop them over here and build it. And voila, I have my campfire. But the thing is, there is no fire because there is no fuel. So if I go to add fuel, you'll notice, yes, I've got to put some fuel in it. But I don't have anything at the moment. Now I could put some branches in there and that would light it, but branches don't last a long time. So what I'm going to do instead is actually chop down a tree, which takes me on to chopping down trees and killing the forest. So in order to actually kill the forest, what you're going to need is to actually make a few basic utilities. And this is going to come to crafting. So let me snap a branch and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so I got one branch. Now, when you go into your inventory, you just double click, left click on that branch and it brings up the crafting menu and it shows you create a primitive tool. Now you can select which one you want to make from in here. And what we want first off is a primitive axe. I've got one branch already. I'm going to need some flintstone and I'm going to need some wild plant fiber. So how am I going to find plant fiber? Well, you freaking guess it. I'm going to pick it off the ground. So I'm going to go into nature's lore. I'm going to gather plant fiber. Now, it won't work like every single time, depending where you go. But if you just try different squares, then you'll eventually gather some plant fiber. So notice how it actually trains up different skills. Like in order to break a branch, it had to use up constitution and willpower. And when I actually pick plant fibers from the grass, that's intellect and willpower. A lot of intelligence comes into that. Now I've got enough plant fibers, now I'm gonna need some flintstone. In order to find some flintstone, you're gonna have to go into like a rocky, hilly sort of area. And what you're gonna do is go into prospecting and search for a useful flintstone. Voila, I have the flintstone. Now again, I'm gonna go back into my menu. I'm gonna go to primitive axe and I have all of those necessary materials. So I'm gonna make myself my axe now. So now I've got my axe in my inventory. I'm just gonna left click it and bring it into my Actual holster, yep, I gotta pat that axe onto my body. Let's now when I press T, it actually brings up all the equipped stuff on my guy and it shows you where it was equipped. And this actually shows you exactly where it was equipped. So for example, like there in my holster is my axe. Now, if I go into combat mode by pressing R, I can actually equip said axe. Look at that, like a badass. And I can go swing at stuff. Like if anyone comes attack you, you just, you know exactly what to do. You get your axe out and you chop him in the face, hack him down like a tree, all right? Now I'm going to go out of combat mode and go it back into normal peaceful mode and I'm going to chop down a tree. Now the thing is you can't actually chop down every single tree. So you're going to go to logging and then cut down here. And your guy is going to be an absolute badass until he actually chops down that tree. Now sometimes it actually won't chop down straight away. It takes a while. Like here, here goes my guy. Is he going to get it? Nope. He's not going to get it the first time, so I have to keep cutting it down. And what's going to happen is that you're going to train up your forestry skill by doing this, and you'll actually see the points go up. See? Look at that. My logging actually went up. And when you keep on doing that, you become more proficient in logging. 
Now the thing is, with your skills, they actually go up at different rates depending on which server you're on. So some servers will go a lot faster, some will be a lot slower. It just depends on how realistic you want it to be. So there's my giant log that's been crapped out, and now what I'm gonna do is actually lift said object like a badass, look at this. And I am just gonna holster it. So now I'm gonna drop the log, so I'm just gonna drop it here, and I'm gonna place it. It's gonna be da it's gonna be basically like the campfire, like a piece of furniture. You just drop it like that. And now the thing is, I can't actually do anything with this log yet. I need to grab a saw. Right, I've actually found somebody, so I'm gonna invite him to my unit. Let's see if he joins. I would hope that he does, and he ho I hope he doesn't kill me. At least my experience so far is that people are quite friendly. But the thing is, in order to survive in this game, you really, really need to group up with people. Now that I have my saw, I can actually cut this thing into pieces, into different things, like billets, which is like a small sort of log board, and also building logs, and these are just used for construction. But the thing is, if you want to be able to actually do this, you need to have the right skill. So when you go press L and go into your crafting skills, you'll notice that you have forestry, logging, and carpentry. In order to unlock carpentry, you need to have the right level of the prerequisite skill. So at least level 30 of logging. I believe and then level 60 of forestry in order to get level 30 of logging You need to at least get those before you can get carpentry and it's the same with the other skills as well And the also nice thing is once you get that carpentry skill when you click anywhere on the ground You can go and construct furniture and it shows you what you can make you can make all these primitive things And they all have different requirements But one really common one thing with them is they need iron and I'm gonna show you how to get iron in just a moment But now that we've got tons of billets. I've got 10 from that one log we can go into our fire, and this is actually my other friend's, my friend's fire, but whatever, same thing. And I can add some fuel. So there's already 10 billets in there, and that is plenty, but I'm gonna add another 10, I suppose. So you might notice there's actually a farming menu. If you go into prepare over here, it shows you a list of different things you can make. So like fried salmon and beef steak, pea porridge, oh my gosh, my mouth is starting to water at the imagination of a pea porridge. Wow, but once you actually get some like meat and also like fish for example, you can actually prepare it here and it's a lot better than eating it raw for example. I'm actually getting quite hungry, as you might have noticed I've actually got 26 hunger at the moment. And so the thing is I could eat some cookies and that would actually increase it a little bit at a time, but you cannot satisfy yourself with cookies, and especially five cookies. There ain't enough cookies in the cookie jar to survive in this world. So in order to find food, there are plenty of different ways as you can imagine, like fish and, and beef. Now from my own experience, when you're just starting out in the game, the, honestly the best way is to actually go simply searching for food in the grass, whether that's insects, well, you can't actually get insects, but what you do is if you go into nature's lore and you search for something edible You're eventually gonna find something maybe not straight away But the it's the same thing as when you're actually looking for like Flintstone or plant fibers It really depends you just have to look around see I fail to find anything But eventually you're gonna find something edible found this thing. It's an edible tap root All right, and these are really good like let me eat this and I'll show you and trust me This is the best way of actually increasing your hunger. Look at that, all the way up to 64, that is insane. I've tried fishing and fishing is just really not reliable. Like you'll find fish, but sometimes it'll just be like, you'll do the fishing animation like 15 times and you won't catch anything. It's just so unreliable. And this really is the best way at the beginning to actually find some food. Just search for something edible. Now another thing you can actually do is go hunting for animals, but from my experience, using a slingshot is really, or a sling actually, is really hard to use. And if you're gonna have any success with it, you're gonna need like 150 stones or something because it's just, it's so hard to use. And once you kill that animal, it'll give you like 150 meat and each meal is like six meat. So you can imagine that quick math is like 25 if I'm doing that right, it's 25 meals, and each meal gives you like a load of hunger, like 20 or 25, something like that. So getting meat is really nice, but in the beginning, just searching for something edible is so much easier. So I've got a number of tools now, including my pickaxe and shovel, and so in order to actually start getting some iron and rocks, what you're gonna need to actually do is level up your terraforming skill. So as you can see, mine is 61, and it's really easy. All you have to do is just go up to like a patch of ground over here and just go to terraforming and then like literally flatten the ground and just over and over you like, sort of grind it out and eventually when you get to level 60 you can start digging a tunnel and once you're at that stage then you can grab your pickaxe go into a rocky area over here and literally if you just click like dig it what you can't terraform that part it's too it is too far 
It's just right in front of me. Okay, so I dug a tunnel right next door to that area, and, well, it's not much of a tunnel, but I got a bunch of rock, and so- Oh, my friend is back. And so I've got loads of just raw rock over here, and rock, you can, like, pour on the ground, and I think it looks a bit ridiculous. You need a sh proper tool, a shovel to do that. When you have a proper tool, it actually rolls down the hill. It looks so ridiculous when you do it. It looks pretty cool, actually. But- what you can do in order to actually shape this into stuff that you can actually use is you go to your primitive pickaxe, you right click it, and you go to construct materials preparation. So now you get a big context menu of like all the different things that you can make here, like a shaped rock. So I could just like make shaped rock right now if I wanted to. And I could use that for actually building things. So it's time to find some iron, but it really is not the right time of the day to be looking- Well, I suppose night to be looking for it because it's so dark. But that should be fine because Prospecting is actually a game of Mark and Polo, essentially. So what you're gonna do in order to play the game of Mark and Polo is you're gonna go to Prospecting up on a hillside and you're gonna look for iron, prospect for iron. Now, you're gonna want to have a big search radius first because what it is essentially is playing a game of Mark and Pol Marco Polo or hot and cold. So basically, you wanna go from a high radius, move around, and just try to get it into a smaller and smaller radius until you're basically right on top of it. Okay, so this is good. I found some traces of ore. Now, I'm just making the search radius smaller and smaller and smaller until I find something. See, I didn't find anything because I made it so small that it's actually like... Whatever ore there is, it's outside of that radius. So I need to move around and keep on looking for it until I just home in on it. Alright, so it took absolute ages. In fact, I had to go onto another server and we've got a massive group of people here. I have struck iron. So eventually, once you get to a radius of two, what you do is you go to terraforming and dig a tunnel, and you'll be able to find iron. It goes into your inventory. See that block? That's iron. So that, after that, you need to smelt it down in a furnace, and then you can actually start making stuff. So there we go, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this, and it gave you an idea of how to survive and start off in this game. I plan on doing a regular series, because this game is just so addicting and so fun. You really gotta get a lot of people. It is just absolutely awesome. Thank you guys, and until next video, this is Dion, and I'll catch you next time. No one around. This looks like a pretty good store to loot. Number two, I should have built that room. <laughs> this house is turning